What's up y'all? This is Daniel with Pride of the Southland Kennels. Got a part two slash update video over the topic of the black American Bulldogs. I uh, made a video a few months back and some of the statements that I made in the video um, people had um, other opinions on them and things like that. So what I decided to do was do a little bit more uh, research on the topic. Make sure that what I'm saying is number one true and try to get the entire truth out there. I don't believe that anything I said in the last video was um, incorrect, but um, some of the things just might have not been the entire truth or the whole story, if you want to say it like that. So what I've done here is I've, I've got me a list, and what I'm going to do first is um, I'm going to go through the people that I believe helped um, play a role in creating the Black American Bulldog, and after, the, after I go through the list, then I'll tell you um, why I put their name on the list. So since the last video, I have talked to Don Matthews about this and I asked him some of these questions that were um, debated um, or some, I asked him questions about some of the topics that were debated just so I could get the information directly from the source. So uh, the list of names I have, I have six people on this list. And then once I go through the list, I will tell you um, <clears throat> why I put their names on the list and tell you what roles I believe they played. The first name on the list is Dale Morgan. He's the president of the National Kennel Club, which recognizes the American Bulldog. They were the first registry to recognize them. Um, I have Ray Weaver on here. He was a, a dog breeder of American Pit Bull Terriers and American Bulldogs. I have Don Matthews, which, you know, this everyone knows Don Matthews when you speak about black American Bulldogs. He's an American Bulldog breeder been doing it for over 40 years. Um, then I have Floyd Boudreaux, which some people around the American Bulldog breed might not know who he is. But uh, Floyd Boudreaux is a famous, you know, legendary American Pit Bull Terrier breeder out of Louisiana. Um, and then uh, last person on the list, I have John Liptart. Um, he's also an American Bulldog breeder. Um, so Dale Morgan is the president of the NKC and the reason that I have him on this list is because he was the one that allowed this cross to be made. So black American Bulldogs were created by crossing um, game American Pit Bull Terriers into American Bulldogs. Um, NKC used to have what they call the 7-8 rule which means um, you can make a cross and we're just to give you an example since we're talking about this topic of the black American Bulldogs, they allowed um, breeders to cross American Pit Bull Terriers into American Bulldogs. But that litter that was um, produced from breeding an American Pit Bull Terrier and American Bulldog together wasn't allowed to be registered because the dogs were 50% Pit Bull, 50% American Bulldog. So how the 7 8 rule comes into play is those they could get those dogs registered once they were 7 8 7 8 or 87 and a half percent American bulldog. So um, you know that takes that takes several generations of breeding to do it the right way, several years to do it, but once they reached that point, then they were allowed to um, register these dogs as black American bulldogs, which that's what Don Matthews ended up doing. Now, I don't know if Don Matthews was the first one to register an American Bulldog, or a Black American Bulldog, excuse me, um, but when I asked him if he created the Black American Bulldog, he told me no. So he told me that there was a guy in the military by the name of Ray Weaver um, that was actually breeding these dogs. Um, Don Matthews told me he was the ones that, or he was the one that really promoted it. So he. You know, I guess that's why everybody thinks that he's the one that created it because he's the one that took it um, to the level that, that it's at now. Um, so, so not to get too far off subject and jump ahead on this list, but you know, next on the list is Ray Weaver, which I just mentioned. Now, Ray Weaver had some American Pit Bull Terriers and he had some American Bulldogs. And the reason he wanted to cross American Pit Bull Terrier into his American Bulldog line is because they had health issues and the American Pit Bull Terrier is actually a, a, a fairly healthy breed, a really healthy breed to be honest with you. They're a small frame dog, they've been bred for years and years and years and there's a lot of good breeders out there breeding these dogs that know what they're doing. So they don't typically have 
a lot of health issues if you get them from a reputable breeder. So the, I'm going to have to jump ahead on this list a little bit um, to tie it in in, uh, in the correct order. So the reason uh, Floyd Boudreaux was on the list is because that's who Ray Weaver got his dogs from. Now, the part that I don't know is if Floyd Boudreaux really knew um, that Ray Weaver was going to cross uh, some of them gang dogs into the Bulldogs, but but I did put him on the list because I believe that um, Mr. Weaver told Floyd Boudreaux out of respect what he wanted to do. So Ray Weaver did breed American Pit Bull Terriers to American Pit Bull Terriers, and he also bred American Bulldogs to American Bulldogs. So he was having some health issues in his line, so he wanted to do an outcross. So I guess he had been doing very well with his um, with his American Pit Bull Terrier bloodline. So he decided to cross that into it, and Dale Morgan allowed that. So now you can see how, how all this is starting to, to tie in. Um, so then third on the list is obviously Don Matthews. Um, another topic um, on the last video or statement that I made that was kind of met with some uh, um, debate, I guess you could say, was did they use an American Staffordshire Terrier or did they use a Staffordshire Bull Terrier? So those of y'all that aren't familiar with either of those breeds, um, both of those are, just to keep it simple, um, Amstaff and a Staffordshire Bull Terrier are both pretty much cousins to the American Pit Bull Terrier, I guess you could say it that way. Um, the Amstaff really um, was created because they split dog fighting dogs and show dogs. Um, some of the early Amstaffs and American Pitbull Terriers were actually from um, same bloodlines and things like that. So uh, you had some dogs going to the show ring. Obviously back then you had some dogs going to the pit. That's where those dogs separated. Staffordshire Bull Terrier is down off of those dogs. Um, it's where the American Pitbull Terrier is said to come from. They're a really small dog. Um, Typically, you know, I think their standard is about 25 to 37 pounds. Um, but Don Matthews said they indeed used an American Staffordshire Terrier, a black American Staffordshire Terrier. So that's what I thought originally because of the size of the dogs. But some people might have gotten um, confused that really know what Don Matthews is doing and might have assumed that when he said that it was a Staffordshire Bull Terrier because Don Matthews himself actually breeds Staffordshire Bull Terriers. I didn't know that until I spoke with him on the phone. So that might be um, some of the reasons that people thought that. Uh, another reason is there's a lot of Staffordshire Bull Terriers that are black. You know, typically if you Google a Staffordshire Bull Terrier, um, a, a picture of a black dog is gonna uh, show up. But they have fawn ones and they have white ones. Um, but um, a lot of them that you see are, are black. So um, those are the two things that were debated in the last video. Don Matthews admitted his, to himself that um, he didn't create the Black American Bulldog. He gave credit to Ray Weaver, but he did say he's the one that um, promoted it. And, you know, um, he's the one that made, made the, the line well known, I guess you could say. And also, I read an interview um, with Ray Weaver and um, he actually said that he could have probably never took it to the level that Don Matthews uh, did or gave or basically I, I shouldn't say that basically he gave Don Matthews credit for taking it to where it's at because he didn't do that um, that wasn't his intentions on doing that he was doing it to clean his bloodline up um, so I'm gonna skip over Alan Scott for right now because he's next on my list and we've already covered Floyd Boudreaux. But then we wanna go to John Lichtart. So if you look at these um, dogs and these pedigrees, especially Lichtart's Jedi, that's the one that always comes up whenever you talk about black American Bulldogs for some reason. Um, um, I'm not really sure of the time frame on these breedings. I've been told it was, you know, late 90s when they made this cross. But Liptarch Jedi, if you go to pedigreedatabase.com pedigree and you look up this dog's pedigree, you'll see that on the bottom side where um, the mother to him should be listed as blank. And the reason it's blank is because that was 
um, a dog from Floyd Boudreaux that Ray Waver bred to lick tarts felony. So um, that's where all this, that's where all these names tie in. And actually, I don't know how this played out. I'm going to try to dig and get more information on this. Lick Tart's Jedi was actually owned by Ray Weaver first, and his actual registered name was uh, Weaver's Onyx New Jack. So he says that Lick Tart's Jedi should never be called um, Lick Tart's Jedi unless you unless it's just you know you calling that name on a yard because his registered name is is uh, Weaver's Onyx New Jack. So that was some uh, pretty interesting information to find out. Um, but then. I want to talk about Alan Scott too because everyone when you're talking about the American Bulldog obviously you know who Alan Scott is um, he's pretty much one of the godfathers of the the breed as some people say um, but he is known for um, creating um, or reviving him and Mr. Johnson reviving this this breed of the American Bulldog but back then most of these dogs is white so the reason that I bring him up is if you go to pedigreedatabase.com and I'll leave the link for all these pedigrees, pedigrees in the description. If you go look up Scott's Dixie Blackjack, you'll see that the sire to that dog was Williamson's Mr. Tough Guy and the dame was Dixie Lady of uh, Al Hollow Kennels, which is Alan Scott's kennel. Um, but any information on the bottom side of that pedigree for, that, for the mom or the mother is blank and it's a black dog. So, I'm going out on a limb here again, but I believe also right then and there, um, Mr. Scott infused American Pitbull Terrier blood into that dog too. And I'm going off of pedigreedatabase.com and trying to look at the picture and look at some of the other dogs in the pedigree. And I want to say, and I'm sure there's going to be people out there that know um, a lot more on this subject than I do. And if you do, just please leave me a comment and let me know. But I'm going to say that this breeding and that dog was created um, before Ray Weaver, John Licktart, and Don Matthews was doing these um, other breedings that we was discussing, you know, regarding Licktart's felony and uh, the Boudreaux dog. Um, and the reason I say that is if you look at the picture, Mr. Scott's young in the picture. Um, also, um, Scott's Dixie Blackjack, that dog that we're talking about, is literally three generations down from Johnson's Dick the Bruiser, which was born in 1956. So, you know, you can breed a dog as long as you want to. Um, you know, I know some people that breed, you know, 10, 11 year old dogs, but you know, even at 10 or 11 years old, that dog is a, um, that's still 1960s is when he was being bred. And then you got to figure a couple generations off that, you know, that, that puts them um, somewhere in maybe possibly, you know, the eighties, you know, give or take, late 70s, early 80s. The picture honestly looks like um, it was from the 80s, just judging Mr. Scott's age and the way he was dressed. And I'm not trying to go be too cheesy or corny about this, but you know, you just, style has changed over the years. So you just gotta um, make an educated guess on when these pictures were taking place. Now, the other thing that could have happened is um, frozen semen, but the reason I doubt that that happened is because, you know, Johnson and Scott split split ways, you know, a long time ago. Um, I think they only bred together for around eight years. I could be wrong about that. Um, but I don't think it was very, very long that they bred and together. And then they started having different opinions and they split ways. So I don't know that he would have a three generation dog off of um, one of Mr. Johnson's dogs. In the in the late 90s or early 2000s but I could be wrong so um, I think I covered everything that I um, wanted to cover there may be a part three to this um, just depends on what we see in the comment section but all I'm trying to do with this video is just get the correct information out there I don't ever want to mislead anybody this is a very interesting topic to me um, because I come from American Pit Bull Terriers and now that I'm getting into the American Bulldogs I'm finding out that these that the American Pit Bull Terrier was actually used in more bloodlines um, than originally thought you know everybody obviously says Painter and Margentina lines used um, American Pit Bull Terrier and theirs but you know I'm, I'm finding out that it's possible Mr. Scott done it 
Um, and then, of course, these these black American Bulldogs, that's exactly where they came from, was um, crossing these American Bulldogs into game dogs and breeding back until you have, um, excuse me, until you have a dog that's 87.5% American Bulldog and then it's able to be registered. So, uh, and by the way, if anyone's um, curious, that 7-8 rule, they, they threw it out because I believe people were hanging papers and they was adding other breeds. There's some breeds that, um, not to get too far off subject, there's some breeds that compliment, compliment excuse me, um, other breeds. And, you know, people started throwing English Bulldog and Old English Bulldog into these American Bulldogs, and I just don't think that's one that compliments them because these dogs were bred to be... Um, farm hands, you know, they was bred to be on a farm um, doing utility type work from um, protection work to livestock guardian to even um, herding livestock. So, you know, those other types of dogs, they don't, um, they don't really, they don't really add anything to the breed uh, that the breed would benefit off of, but however, the American Pitbull Terror adds all kinds of attributes to it um, that that would only clean it up. So thank you all for watching. Uh, let me know what you think in the comment section. Um, and if we get a good conversation going, then we'll have a part three. Thank you all for watching.